Join Kids Hat Family. What in the world are you trying to do? I am trying to pluck those juicy fruits from this tree. <laughs> but do you think you will be able to pluck them? They are so high. Oh, I wish I could fly and pluck those fruits. I so wish I had wings. To wish is not bad. But one should be conscious about the consequences. Come, I'll tell you a story. The tortoise and the eagle. A young tortoise was lazing around the river bank, looking at the birds flying in the sky. He stared at them and started thinking out aloud. I wish I could fly like those birds, up high in the sky, and watch the beautiful sceneries and beauty of the world from top of the world. Oh, I so wish that. Nearby, an eagle was sitting on a stone, listening to what the tortoise was thinking out loud, and couldn't resist but ask. Why do you want to fly? You should be happy with what you are gifted with. I wish I could fly with no trouble of crawling on the ground. So say that you want to fly because you don't want to crawl, not because you wish to see the world from the sky. Anyway, what will I get in return for making you fly in the sky? I'll give you the riches of gold from the Red Sea. So the eagle grabbed the tortoise in its claws and soared up high in the sky, making him see all the beautiful sceneries of the world. Flying higher in the clouds and closer to the stars, it was indeed a mesmerizing moment for the tortoise. While the eagle was flying over the river bank. The rest of the tortoise were basking in the sun. Suddenly, the tortoise, flying high up in the sky, said, "I wish my friends could watch me flying so high in the sky. I am sure they would get jealous watching me." What? Why would you want your friends to get jealous of you? I want them to see that I can fly, and they cannot. It's such a nice feeling. What an evil friend this tortoise is! Thought the eagle. With this, the eagle dropped him on the ground and asked for his treasure. Now give me my reward. <laughs> There is no reward. I was just kidding about the gold, so that you could take me for a ride. And with this. The tortoise left. The eagle couldn't tolerate his insult and decided to teach him a lesson. So the next day, the eagle went to the tortoise and said, "Hey, would you like to go for a sky ride again?" "Yes, sure. I would love to." The eagle once again picked him up and clenched him in his claws. The tortoise, while enjoying the ride, said to the eagle, "Why did you bring me again for the ride, even though I dishonored my promise of rewarding you?" "That's because, tortoise, you wish to make your friends jealous, but at my cost. And now I let you enjoy the free fall." The eagle, 
let his claws loose and the tortoise went falling down. Screaming for help and flying no longer, he crashed on the ground with a thud. Thanks to his shell, he didn't get injured. Soon, his old friends surrounded him and said, Hey, our young friend, you wanted to see the world from high up in the sky. To dream big is not a sin, but to dream it at the cost of others is just not justifiable. I have learnt my lesson now. I should be thankful to God for what I am blessed with. It was my shell only that saved my life. I should be happy with what I have and also should not use others for my selfish reasons. I surely have learnt my lesson. Tia, now I know what you are trying to say. I learnt a lesson too. One should think about the consequences before one wishes for something. I should be happy with what I am blessed with. I should rather look for an alternative to pluck those fruits. Wait, I'll get a ladder! <laughs> Tofu, you learn things quite fast. Steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. What happened, Tofu? What is it that you are thinking? Yes, dear. I am not able to understand how can a person win the race if he is slow and yet steady? There is a very famous story behind this. Should I tell you that first? Sure. The Hare and the Tortoise Long ago, in a forest, a small get-together of animals was taking place. You know what? I can beat anyone in this forest. Nobody can beat me in a race. Yes, I have seen him running. I bet he can beat anyone in this forest. Suddenly, from the crowd, they hear somebody laughing. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You think you can beat me in a race? I may not disagree with you, O oh Mr. Hare. But I might not deny that I have no fear of competing with you. Oh really? So let's have a race and let's see who wins. So one fine sunny day, all the animals gathered for the race. Every 
everybody was sure that the hare is going to be a clear cut winner. Said the hare proudly. <laughs> now let's go, old man. I'll beat you in a second. The hare runs so fast that all the things on the path go for a spin. On the other hand, the tortoise is running too, but at such a pace that even snails could pass by him easily. <laughs> Suddenly, the hare stops and looks behind. Oh my lord! That tortoise is gonna take ages to reach this point. So let's just stop here and take some rest. By the time he reaches here, I would get good rest. And then cover him up in a blink of a second. In the meanwhile, the tortoise slowly and steadily reaches the point where the hare is fast asleep. He very quietly tiptoes past the hare. And the hare is all ignorant of this fact. Suddenly, the hare gets up by the rows of the crowd, cheering up the tortoise. Go tortoise, go! Go tortoise! Lord, how is that possible? I kept on sleeping for so long that the tortoise is about to finish the race. He runs and runs and runs. But to his disappointment, the tortoise just manages to finish the race before he could. In the story, the hare was so full of himself. He was overconfident that he would surely beat the tortoise in the race. Because he is faster than that poor being in every other way. But, but the hare underestimated the tortoise and succumbed in his own fake overconfidence. Yes, and that's why only a person who thinks calmly and is not overconfident of himself wins the race in every sphere of life. Proud people can't survive for long. Hmm. later tonight. Later tonight? 
it's not safe to go alone tofu and i won't be going because i have an exam tomorrow so you won't be able to go either but jack said it's safe and joe and jim everyone is going who told him some older boys we don't know them they were visiting from another city that's not the correct way to do things tofu you have to double check some things for yourself at times and be careful with whom you trust do you know what happened to chicken little and his friends what happened to them chicken little chicken little liked to walk in the woods one day as she was walking in the forest and looking at the flowers and the trees an acorn fell from a tree on the top of her head oh no the sky is falling i must run and tell the lion about it immediately and so chicken little began running on the way she met the henny penny the hen where are you running to is everything okay oh no henny penny the sky is falling and i'm going to the lion to tell him about it how do you know that it fell on my head and hit me that's terrible come i'll go with you too we must hurry and tell the lion about this chicken little and henny penny started running as they were heading to the lions they met ducky lucky wait guys wait where are you going in such a hurry the sky is falling it fell on chicken little's head we are going to the lion to tell him about it let me also come with you come come as the three of them were running they met foxy loxy where are you guys going the sky is falling it fell on chicken little's head and we've decided to go to tell the lion about it yes yes the lion must be told about this but do you know where he lives the fox had pointed out this problem correctly none of them knew where the lion lived i know where he lives come with me and i will show you the way happy to have found help the three of them agreed the fox took them to his own den and told them to wait at its entrance as he went inside wait here let me go talk to the lion first when he is ready to meet you he will call you all inside after a while foxy loxy called from inside come in friends chicken little henny penny ducky lucky went inside but never came out again so you see tofu you should always exercise caution before you go following things blindly yes dia now i have understood the importance of trusting the right people and not believing things blindly tonight i am going to stay home and will tell my friends to do the same too Tia I'm really hungry what's for lunch Come tofu mom has made your favorite meal today 
My favorite. Yum. <coughs> oh dear, something got stuck in my throat. How many times have I told you not to eat in such a hurry? But I was hungry, dear. <laughs> you need to listen to this story. The goose that laid golden eggs. Once upon a time, in a village, there lived a poor farmer with his wife. They had nothing but a little farm where they grew vegetables that they could eat. However, he managed to save a little money each time he sold vegetables from his farm. Eventually, he saved up enough money to buy a goose. He took it home and made a nest for it to lay eggs. The goose will produce eggs which he could use for selling, eating and making bread, thought the farmer. The next morning, when he went to gather some eggs for his breakfast, he lifted the goose and to his surprise, the goose had laid a golden egg. The next morning, he found another egg and the next and the next. Slowly and steadily, the farmer and his wife were becoming richer and richer. Just think, if we could have all the golden eggs that are inside the goose, we could be richer much faster. You're right, we wouldn't have to wait for the goose to lay her egg every day. So the couple killed the goose and cut her open. <laughs> Only to find that she was just like every other goose. She had no golden eggs inside of her at all. And they had no more golden eggs. Alas, now the farmer and his wife had lost the goose and they would never get any golden eggs again. So Tofu, just like the couple suffered because they were greedy, you should be careful too because too much greed always leads to great loss. Oh, got it Tia. I'll be careful next time. What's wrong, Tofu? I can't sleep. Would a bedtime story help? Yeah, I guess. The Ugly Duckling Once near a beautiful pond, there lived a handsome duck couple. They were very excited as the babies were about to get hatched from the eggs. The papa duck was so eager to see his babies that all he could do was roam here and there in anxiety. Suddenly, 
What they hear is sweet little quack quacks coming from the nest and the papa duck just rushes to the nest to catch the first glimpse of his babies. Oh my god! They are so lovely! Suddenly, a horse quack comes from below Mama Duck. You are so ugly and pale. You can't be our baby. The Papa and Mama Duck, along with their four babies, sail away, far away from the ugly duckling, leaving him behind in dismay and all alone. The poor duckling doesn't know what's wrong with him. He checks his wings, his beak, his feet, but all looks fine. Suddenly, he turns around and sees his reflection in the pond. And what he sees sends him complete disappointment. Nobody loves me. What would I do now? Where would I go? The ugly duckling starts walking in complete sadness. So many days, weeks and months pass by and the poor ugly duckling wanders all alone in the deep forest. Suddenly, he stops and feels extremely cold. Oh, it is so cold! I wish I had a warm house too! Suddenly, a huge ball of snow comes rolling from behind and the poor duckling gets caught in that and starts screaming for help. A woodcutter cutting the woods in a nearby place hears the scream of the duckling and runs for help. Oh, poor thing! Come here! You need something warm to drink. The woodcutter picks up the ugly duckling and keeps him in the warmth of his overcoat. He takes him home and keeps him wrapped in a warm blanket right in front of the fireplace. Don't worry, poor little thing. I will take care of you. And like this, many years pass by and the ugly duckling grew under the care of the woodcutter. But one thing he made sure, never did he see his reflection again. One day, on a sunny afternoon, he was wandering around the sides of a lake. Suddenly, he sees a wedge of swans swimming in the pond. Look at those swans! They are so beautiful! I wish I was a beautiful duck too. I have no friends because I am so ugly. I feel oh so lonely. To his amazement, he sees the wedge of swans coming towards him. What he sees is the most beautiful swan ever. Hey, we have never seen you around. Are you new here? No, I live nearby with the woodcutter. It's just that I don't come out often. Why is that so? Because I'm an ugly duck. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to his surprise, he sees them laughing at him. He decides to turn back when suddenly he hears the voice of the beautiful swan. Wait, where are you going? 
see, even you guys make fun of me. That's the reason I never come out. We laughed because you called yourself a duck. What do you mean? Yes, you are not a duck. You are a swan. And I haven't seen such a handsome swan ever in my life. He couldn't believe of what he just heard and stood there in a state of shock. And after a few seconds, managed to say, What? The beautiful swan held the hand of the duck and took him near the pond. See yourself. You are a swan. The ugly duckling very reluctantly bends over the water because he doesn't want to see the ugly him. But what he sees leaves him in total disbelief. He is not a duck. He is a swan. A handsome young swan. I am a swan. He jumps and flies and swims in sheer happiness and then suddenly stops to thank the beautiful swan. Thank you so much for making me know who I am. <laughs> so now that you know you are a swan, would you join our wedge? We would live together as a happy family. Yes, I would love to do that. And then the ugly duckling, oops, the handsome swan jumps into the water with the rest of the swans and swims proudly with them. So the poor duck was never a duck? A swan all throughout? <laughs> yeah, and that's what the moral of the story is. A diamond doesn't know its worth till it's polished. Aha! Uh -huh. Good night, Tofu. It's time to sleep now. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.